Hello! You are about to embark on the wonderful adventure of scuba diving. You will be given the means to enjoy Earth's last frontier, the underwater world. Before you begin your adventure, there are risks you must be aware of and understand. Be aware that water is not a human's natural environment. Anytime you enter the water to scuba dive, there is the risk of an accident that may include injury or even death. At first, you will need to listen to and learn from your instructor, who will teach you how to be a scuba diver. But the very essence of the course is to make you independent, so the responsibility for your well-being depends on you. Because your safety basically depends on your personal actions and how well you apply yourself and follow the rules, you will be required to sign a series of forms. It is very important that you read each form carefully so you understand fully what you are signing and what rights you are relinquishing. Let's now watch an overview of the areas of risk in scuba diving. You will see that if you follow the safety rules discussed in your course, the risks are relatively small and controllable, and you can learn to be a responsible diver. Anyone who is interested in diving, has good physical and mental health, and is comfortable in the water, can learn to scuba dive. Good physical and mental fitness means good general health. You do not need to be a super athlete, but you do need to be reasonably fit, as scuba diving puts stress on both your body and your mind. There are some pre-existing medical contraindications that might disqualify you from scuba diving. To help you review this aspect of fitness, your instructor can provide you with a medical history form. Please complete it honestly. We do care about your well-being. Areas of particular concern are the circulatory and respiratory systems, air spaces, and any condition that might cause a person to pass out or lose consciousness. If there is any concern about your medical condition, you will be asked to have a medical exam by a licensed medical practitioner before participation in open water scuba activities. Substance abuse of any kind, be it alcohol, drugs, or smoking, has no place in scuba diving. If you have any problem with any of these, it is far better to deal with the problem before you take scuba lessons. A key element to your success as a scuba diver is motivation. You have to want to do it. You should not be in a scuba class to please someone else if you are unduly afraid of the water or the activity. It is natural to feel somewhat excited, even stressed, prior to open water diving. But remember, you have been trained to deal with the risks. Follow the rules and dive within your limits and you will have a wonderful adventure. With good physical and mental fitness, you are now ready to proceed to the water aspects of scuba diving. To be a scuba diver, you need to be comfortable in the water and able to swim, but you do not need to be a great swimmer. You will be learning a whole new aquatic activity called scuba skills. There will always be some risk to scuba diving, but by being knowledgeable of that risk, you can reduce it. Scuba diving is an equipment-intense activity. Without special equipment, we could not see, breathe, or move underwater. You need a proper, complete total diving system that fits and is adjusted for you. Purchasing a total diving system that is best for you will improve your safety and enjoyment of diving. One last but important part of diving is learning to take proper care of your total diving system after every dive to prevent the risk of injury from equipment problems or failure. Misuse of diving equipment is the main concern, as malfunction rarely causes accidents. Manufacturers supply warning labels about proper use and care of equipment and the importance of proper training to prevent misuse. Breathing and pressure changes are also of particular importance to scuba divers. Because water weighs a great deal more than air, pressure increases rapidly as you go down and must be equalized. Your diving equipment and the skills you learn in class 
will prepare you to handle these pressure changes. Obviously, it is very important to have enough air to breathe underwater. Running out of air is usually a result of human error and puts a diver at great risk. Because the air you breathe is compressed and the pressure changes quickly as you go down and up, you will learn to breathe all the time and to equalize pressure in your body's air spaces, which includes the ears and sinuses. Failure to equalize with the pressure underwater may cause damage to your ears or sinuses. If you were to hold your breath and ascend, you could suffer an overexpansion injury. This is a serious injury. Remember, scuba diving does present a risk. However, by knowing what to do, you can reduce that risk. Buoyancy control is a primary skill of scuba diving. Proper use of a well-fitting buoyancy compensator, or BC, makes diving safer, easier, more comfortable, and more enjoyable. Much of your training in your scuba course will focus on learning to use buoyancy control to your advantage while underwater. But buoyancy control is also important on the surface. Keeping your BC inflated on the surface allows you to rest easily. Communicating with and maintaining contact with both your instructor and dive buddy adds to the enjoyment and safety of diving. This includes following instructions and the safe rules of diving, while keeping your instructor informed of your special needs and concerns. An equally important responsibility as a diver is to not leave your dive buddy during any diving activity. Control is a key concept in scuba diving. This means you are in control of your mind, body, and total diving system, so you can effectively deal with the environment, your body, and yourself. In diving, we talk about staying in your comfort zone by knowing your limits. This provides a margin of safety in difficult situations and helps you keep faith with the cardinal rule of all adventuresome activities. Stay calm, don't panic. All of these things taken together will help you develop a level of awareness so you are ready to participate in scuba diving. You will learn to reduce risk, but it cannot be eliminated. Ultimately, you will be responsible for your own well-being and enjoyment of diving. Because you have been informed of many of the risks of scuba diving, you can now go through the details of completing the necessary forms in which you acknowledge this information. You can then begin your diving course and your exploration of the underwater world. You have completed the first phase of your training and are now ready to continue. Since the nature of some open water skills requires the instructor to give direct attention to one student at a time, there will be moments when you're out of the instructor's vision. As always, it is your responsibility to maintain contact at all times. Also, the instructor can only judge you by your performance. It is your responsibility to say how you feel. Let the instructor know if you're cold, sick, overheated, or tired. You should not participate if you don't feel well. And you should never say you're satisfied with your performance if you aren't. This video will show areas of risk in the open water, so you have a clear understanding of your responsibilities prior to signing the required forms. Breathing with scuba is best done in a slow, deep, relaxed manner. Breathe continuously and do not hold your breath. Swimming in a steady, slow, easy manner with neutral buoyancy will make you a more efficient diver. Another major concern of scuba diving is the possibility of having an overexpansion injury while ascending. By relaxing and breathing as you control your buoyancy, you can perform a slow and easy ascent. You need to look up 
reach up and proceed with care as you approach the surface. Otherwise, you might hit something, such as a boat, on the way up. Once on the surface, make your presence known to boaters. Be aware that you can see boats better than they can see you. Your understanding, your equipment, and your skills all help reduce the risks of diving. But remember that injuries can still occur. One concern about temperature is that you might overheat on the surface while you are putting on your dive gear. The other concern is that you may become excessively cold while underwater. Water takes away body heat 25 times faster than air. Therefore, divers need to wear the correct protective suit for the water temperature. Decompression sickness is a problem that can occur even if you follow all the rules. This is something you need to know and understand. Time underwater is based on decompression needs, air consumption, and comfort. You need to plan your dive and monitor your air supply to avoid running out of air. An out of air situation could lead to panic and drowning. Extra care must be used as you enter or exit the water, so as not to hurt yourself or others. A rocky shoreline, surf, and currents all add up to risks of diving. Diving skills, along with a calm, relaxed approach, will help you deal with these environmental conditions. Entanglement is a problem that can be handled as long as you don't panic. Some aquatic life can be harmful and care needs to be taken to avoid contact and to not provoke animals. The risk of diving-related injury is, of course, greater in the open water than in the swimming pool. But how you behave and relate to other divers is a key to lessening problems. You need to follow the instructions from diving leaders and follow the safe rules of diving. It is your responsibility to maintain both buddy and instructor contact during open water training dives. At the same time, only do those things to and with your buddy that you are comfortable with. You need to stay within your comfort zone. Keep your instructor informed of your needs, wishes, and concerns. The whole process of instruction will therefore go far better. Remember, the instructor only knows how you look not how you feel. Stress is a normal and expected part of scuba diving. You need to control it to be able to solve problems while in the water. By developing a higher level of awareness of yourself, your buddy, your skills, your total diving system, and the environment, you will be a better and safer diver. By putting all these ideas together with your training, you will be ready to dive in open water. Risk is a part of life. Activities that add adventure to our lives also add risks. Yet most recreational divers enjoy scuba diving without ever having an injury. At the same time, no one can guarantee that you will never have an accident. Scuba diving is an extremely interesting and enjoyable recreational activity. With the information provided here, your diving instruction, and a thinking approach to scuba diving, you can have exciting adventures with a known and controllable degree of risk. Now that you have been informed of the risks of scuba diving, you can go through the details of completing the necessary forms in which you acknowledge this information so that you can proceed with your diving activities.